Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to be stocking my 10-gallon aquascaped aquarium, and I guess some other aquariums in the process as well. So today I got some fish to stock my 10-gallon tank, but I ended up getting some other fish as well, just because they were there, and I had space for them, and you know, whatever, and like that so let's get our big unboxing done gotta love new fish day after all the time saving up to afford them you get some new fish so a lot of these are adoption fish just so that i can afford them a little better but i'll take a look and just kind of show you guys what we got here so first fish we're going to talk about today we got the classic the school of 10 neon tetras could be more it's hard to count these guys uh when you're netting them out but 10 neon tetras to go in the 10 gallon those will be our main schooling fish these are just such a classic in the hobby i don't have any in the fish room at the moment so i'm definitely super excited to get a nice little school of these they say they are really common um, a lot of people don't get them because just so many other people have them but there's a reason why they're so common and they've been in the hobby so long just because they look really nice all right what else do we have in here this looks like all right we got a rainbow stifodon goby this guy will be for my 36 gallon just as a little oddball off looks grazer I can't really give you guys a good shot of him in the bag, but he's right there. These guys are a little bit pricey at $10 a piece, but they've got crazy personalities. They do a great job eating diets, home algae, and they're just so super fun to watch do their job. And it's just really fun when you see them. They're kind of cautious, but after a while, you'll start to see them way more and way more often. And they'll do great in any community planted tank setting. I plan on stocking that 36 gallon up a little more, but today wasn't the day to get a ton of fish for that tank. So we got this guy for the 36. And here's a fish that I've never had before. It's a peacock gudgeon. So this guy, I've always wanted a peacock gudgeon and he's kind of freaking out right now, but I'm super excited to be able to house him. He's going to be going in the 10 gallon with those neon tetras. I'll probably maybe eventually upgrade him to the 36, but I just saw this guy in here and I really wanted him. So he's in that corner right now. I'm gonna send him back in cause he's a little stressed. We'll give you guys good looks at him while I'm acclimating them. But yeah, so we got that peacock gudgeon to go in that 10 gallon and in here we've got three adoption pencil fish that some guy brought in and these guys will be going in my black water tank because i've already got some pencil fish in there and this will just sort of help round out the school so i can have a few more of them because the pencil fish that i have in there i bought them a while ago i didn't know i was supposed to buy a big school of them uh i didn't do my research because you know this is a while back so i'll finally be able to fill out that school bit i'll have four or five in there depends how many i have left in there so yeah these guys are for my black water tank and that's all the fish I got, but I also kind of got some random stuff just because why not? So first things first, I got this little sort of plant. I think it's a, I think it's a Swiss cheese plant or something like that. I don't know exactly what it's called, but this will be, you can put this in one of your tanks and it'll grow out of it. And so this will just, I'll throw this in there. Uh, what else do we have in here? All right. Yes, we've got this heater. I know it doesn't sound exciting, but I got an amazing deal on this thing. It was like 16 bucks as compared to $40. I checked the website, price matched, and that'll be great. So I'm gonna put this thing on the 36 gallon. I was planning on never heating the 36 gallon, but I wanna do keyhole cichlids in there now, and they require a warmer temperature. So I've got a heater for it now, it's 100 watt. And so I'll put that in there. And the reason that I can put a heater in there, you might be wondering like, well, the soap protectors then that they used to unheated water, won't it stun them if I heat it up? Well, heaters like this are going to take a while to heat up a big tank, so it's going to slowly acclimate them to the warmer water temperatures. They'll probably bring it up to like, I think 75 or something like that. It'll just make sure that everything stays really nice and consistent in this tank. So perfect size heater for that tank. Nice. It's a good black. It's going to blend into the background. So that'll be perfect. That's all we got today. So let's get to acclimating our fish. All right. So because we're already over here, let's throw the 10 gallons. So right now, the only thing that's in there is just some algae crew. And what I'm going to be doing is starting with the neon tetra. It's just going to be floating them. I find that with hardy fish like this, it doesn't make a huge difference whether or not you drip acclimate them. So just to keep them a little less stressed out, I'm going to turn off the light in here. I know it's hard to film this, you can't see the fish, but it just does wonders for keeping them less stressed out while you're acclimating them. I am also gonna add our gudgeon into here. I'm hoping that this doesn't overflow the tank. So the only fish we have in here right now are just some algae crew and some shrimp. So there should be any issue causing contamination, or whatever like that. So I'm just gonna let these guys float acclimate for 30 to 40 minutes, just really get them settled in. All right, so I'm gonna get this goby acclimating float acclimating in here this tank is definitely due for water change but i figured i'd add this guy in before i did that so i am going to turn the light off in here as well all the soapy tetras think he's food 
Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna let him float out main here as well. I switch that light off. And all the fish are going to be really washed out. Everybody who gets new fish knows that. They're going to be really stressed out. So it's going to take a few days for them to show their full colors. All right, last fish we're going to be acclimating are these three barred pencil fish. So these guys were adoptions. So some guy brought these into the store. And he'd had them in his tank for multiple years. You can tell by how large they are for this species of fish. So I'm not worried at all about quarantining them. So I'm just going to flick off this light so that they can acclimate. Uh, so I'm going to let all these guys float acclimate for a little while until uh, it's ready to add them in. Alright everybody, it has been just about a week since we've added our fish in, and everybody is doing well with the exception of one, we'll talk about him later, but that's just something that happens with new fish. So as you can see, Neon Tetras are doing great, of course they are, you know, they're a staple in the hobby, they seem to look really nice in this tank, this tank's starting to look great, algae is completely beaten, no issues with that anymore, but our peacock gudgeon that I put in this tank, I don't know if he's dead, because I haven't seen any like big algae blooms suggesting that a, there's decaying matter in the tank. But I also have an I also have an Amano shrimp in here, so he could have taken care of him. But there's also this huge so this piece of wood right here, if you guys watch the setup built video, is silicone to the back of the tank to hold it in place. But behind it there's this big old cave and it's just a huge pocket that I can't really see into or get into. Um so he probably most likely just hiding back there. He either died back there or just hiding back there. Gudgeons are notoriously pretty shy from being added into a new home. Um, I've talked to some people who hadn't seen those for a full month before, after buying it, before they found, saw him again. So, you know, fingers crossed that uh, he's still alive, but just roll the dice whether or not he's still in there, because uh, all po signs point to that he could be alive, but I haven't seen him, so he could be dead. I don't know. I haven't seen him since the first day I put him in, but, you know, he seemed he was a healthy fish when I put him in, so, you know, fingers crossed. But this tank is looking great. Check out, got some of our shrimp hanging out right there. Auto sinkless hanging out in the back. But yeah, so these fish are doing great. Over with the 36 gallons, sorry if the water's a little cloudy, just did a water change on it. Um, so this is my mistake here. My, the rainbow goby I put in here, I didn't know that they were jumpers, and this tank does not have a lid. And uh, of course, as he was getting settled in, he just got spooked uh, probably in the middle of the night and jumped out. That is, you know, it's just, I didn't think, I probably should have known that something that has such a torpedo-like body shape would be liable to jump, but I kind of thought of him as like a bottom feeder off Lux Grazer, something like, something like an auto, this auto sinkless. I wouldn't think that he would jump, but he did jump out. I found his body on the floor, so unfortunately we lost him. I will try and get another one because I really like the fish, but most likely I will be putting him in this tank just because it's got a lid on it. Look at how good this tank's looking. Look at that valve going in. We got Captain Jack. A one-eyed honey grommy, that's what I named him by the way. See a Captain Jack's hanging out here. Yeah, this tank's looking great. Not gonna give you guys a full update, but yeah, those guys are doing awesome. This tank's doing great. Unfortunately, we lost our rainbow goby. Over with the black water tank, pencil fish. They're also doing great. I'm really sorry about this uh this kind of line right here. I need to clean the glass in this tank. I haven't really gotten around to doing that. I usually do that every water change day, which is Saturday for me. So it's it's Thursday when I'm filming this, so I'll get to that later. But you know, this is how my tank looks. I'm not gonna pretty it up for the camera. This is just how it is. But our pencil fish are doing great. There's one right here, one right there, another one right there. And then the other two that we had in the tank, see there's four right there. We only added three new ones in, but they are really interesting fish. I think they love the black water environment. They really seem to suit it with their sort of muted tones. And I think they really like their tank. They haven't seemed to be bothering anyone uh, at all in this tank, so that's good. They just kind of keep themselves. They're eating totally fine, you'll see. They'll come up when I kind of make it disturbance at the surface. But yeah, so everybody is doing well in this tank. All the new arrivals have been doing great. See, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We got some new fish for the 10 gallon. This tank's finally looking good. Fingers crossed that our gudgeon shows up, but you know, we'll see how that goes. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.